Wasn't the road always going to end up here at some point? Yeah, it definitely was. It feels like... It feels like I was just, as cliche as it sometimes sounds, just growing up and you finding myself. Yeah, I was. Well, I'm going to make what I listen to. And this is exciting to me. And I can do this. And you did. And you built a wonderful audience around it. Thank you. But then it's like, what are you really saying? And I, when I listen to this album, Noah, I'm like, oh, and I, and I bang on about this all the time. Oh, the inner voice is doing the talking now. Hearing you say that and somebody, I also just respect you and your point of view on music. And um, you and I have had conversations in the past, but to hear you say that and someone I respect so much, like actually does mean so much to me because there is so much inner voice of myself in there, but also a lot of like inner child of me in there that's been healed. It's very kind to the parts of you that needed healing. Yeah. And we can be tough on ourselves in that space, man. Yeah. We can, as human beings, we don't, we don't cut ourselves a lot of slack with that. Yeah. We expect ourselves to have the answers all the time. Yeah, and I think also like with finding, with growing up and finding my sound, I think when I wrote July, I surprised myself and and that opened up a whole new world to me where... I gained confidence in myself again. And yeah. I believe that I could write a song. And I just, it wasn't about what happened after I wrote the song. It was just in that moment, writing the songs and getting my feelings out. And there's just so much when I listen back to the album, so much of me that you actually hear in it, like not just in the lyrics, but actually in the music. And that's a first for me is to... It's my first time making an album. So sitting in the studio with Mike Crossy, song by song, instrument by instrument, building out every single song, like my entire soul is in this record. Having a conversation with someone at a moment when there's so much wrapped up in this, when they find enough confidence to approach somebody who's then going to reward that self-confidence by saying, yes, you are that. Someone like Mike going, you are that. I would love to make this with you. And I was such a fan of Mike before getting yeah. in the room with him. Yeah. So I had admired years of his work. Um, I mean, Arctic Monkeys, Ben Howard, Jake Bug are some of my biggest influences. Oh, so, by the way, all three of those artists, if we just need to put that in context for people, are snow leopards. Yeah. Arctic Monkeys are like, all right, is it time to come out from the cave now and make yeah, some music? Yeah, no one's yeah. going to know about it. Ben Harper <laughs> puts himself on the coast in Devon and just and he's, his only company is Mike Crossy and the wind. <laughs> Jake Bug doesn't move around openly. So you're talking about someone who understands, my point being, that understands the privilege of privacy when it comes to finding who you truly are. Yeah. And that's not something that you've probably been afforded a lot in your life. So it must have been lucky and lovely just to be able to go, no one's around. And I really needed that at the time. Yeah. That's where like I get emotional because in a way, just this album saved my life so much. Oh man, the opening song, dude. I had to. I had to learn it. Oh, come it was on. So, I probably messed it up, but it's so beautiful. My boy, Steve, helped me, but it's like, it's like, no. <laughs> oh my God, I love that you learned this song. It's so beautiful and then it's just like, and then it just drops into this little C variation and it's like, ah. And no, what's the opening line? When I turned 20, I was overcome by the thought that I might not turn 21. That's the opening line on the album. Yeah. You can't ask for more than that from people. Thank you. You can't ask for more bravery than that. I mean, most people leave that to the end. They work up to that. You came out and you... you I was floored when I heard that. I was like... You really found a way to listen to oh, yourself. Thanks, man. For real. Thank you. <laughs> it's crazy. Thank you. Wild. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, this, this album came about at a time where I had a lot of change in my life. Um, in the end of December of 
2020 is when I decided to um, try and kick my addiction to downers, prescription pills, painkillers, um, Xanax. That was kind of my drug of choice. And I was completely wrapped inside of that drug. Um, and when I had just lost all hope and all faith and all, um, like what felt like strength to like keep going is when I just broke down and asked for help. Um, where for so long I had been denying, denying, denying and pushing away where I finally just said, I cannot lie to you anymore. I, I called my therapist, I called my psychiatrist. And I think there was a lot of confusion that a lot of things clicked for them where a lot of stories hadn't made sense in the past. You know, a lot of things were clicking and I got the help that I needed. And I also, that I deserve and that every person with addiction or mental health deserves. And then around that time, um, I met a new manager um, he's a huge component in me and my happiness today, genuinely. Like, and, and I don't, you don't get to say that a lot. Like, I genuinely mean that I feel like for the first time in my career, I'm really being thought after and looked after and my well being and who I am, who I am, t like, personally and not as the artist. I not as a business. Yeah, it, I'm not a business. And you came out of a business environment where there's a lot of decisions and a lot of money and a lot of activity at all times. And so you, I guess in, in some respects, for you, you were searching for that sense of protection and that sense of like real connection with just one person who I can just, I just want one person who understands what I want to achieve here. And it's not just wrapped up in this big circus for all the for all the triumph and the challenge that comes with that yeah and I think that's why for the first time everything came together like an actual plan yeah. you know like I had never really had an actual plan like if we're talking like the logistics behind making an album there was no planning before like what we're doing in six months from now or what I'm doing after I write that or do the production with Mike and yeah. with my music videos and how much thought I've put into them and my album artwork because I had that picture in my head for so long until it became a reality and something I could look at and so for me it's all just so surreal that it, it that it's real because you know I know that I for sure was in here with Labyrinth when we put out Make Me Cry that was forever ago and I still haven't put out an album I think before I was still searching for that one producer and and um Labyrinth with was one of those producers one of those writers where I just clicked and I felt like I could create um but it was finding Mike or fighting PJ Harding when we started writing with each other, where it all came so fluid and it and it and it wasn't like a drag of a process. And I didn't feel so exhausted after because it was coming naturally. Yeah. And also, you know, before whenever I was dealing with my addiction, I was so exhausted all the time. I didn't have the energy to create. I didn't have the energy to put truth or I was always writing I think that's one thing that's always stayed the same with me is how truthful I've been and honest I've been about what's going on inside and my mental health and um I mean with my fans I'm really straight up about my mental health and and growing up how that's been hard for me in a public eye but yeah I, I mean I don't know I got to put a lot of it into my music and I've always been really truthful with that and meeting thing, meeting people that brought that out of me, I think also is whenever it sorry, started feeling so naturally to write these songs. I felt when I pressed play on this record, like every step that you'd taken in your life through the good and the bad had led to this point. And it was just flowing purely. Yeah. And you don't often get a chance to experience that when it's in front of you. Thank you. And that's kind of why I wrote it, named the whole record the hardest part. Because there, it was kind of just all of it. Yeah. The hardest part of all of it, my whole life. I feel like I've I've written about my whole life in this little album. Yeah. Whether you may not 
like think that really I feel like I've gotten a lot of my whole life into this album. It's incredibly and unflinchingly courageous as in terms of the personal nature of it. Even the idea of just letting go of people and um, moving on with your life as hard as that is. And you've really like, you know, you've summed that up beautifully. Like a song like Ready to Go is just the idea of it being okay. It's okay. <laughs> that is like not often discussed. Yeah, and I think I had to learn that not only in my relationship, like, but also with losing my grandma mm. and having that song, Loretta's song on the record. I had to be okay with her going and I had to, and I wasn't, and I wasn't for a really long time. Um, and I also was really angry at myself for not emotionally being there for her. And for my mother, my mom's adopted. She has no family outside of us. She doesn't have any siblings. She doesn't, she doesn't know her family outside. So it's, she, we're all she's got. Her mom's all she's got. And so losing her mom, I, I always knew kind of to prepare for that and to prepare to be there for my mom. And I wasn't. And that was the one time that I, and, and I, now I'm, forgiven myself and I've moved on. I've created this music and I've moved on and I've forgiven myself. I can really genuinely say that even talking and being open about that moment and that guilt has helped let me let go of it. But during my grandma's funeral and, you know, the day I got the phone call that she had passed, I couldn't be there emotionally because I was already too far gone. Um... And, you know, if I had, if I could take one thing back, like I think if I could choose one thing in my entire life back, it would be that. My grandma, she didn't get to see us the last six months of her life because of the virus and where she lived had shut down. No one could get in. No one could get out. So I think also I, I really was hard on myself about like picking up the phone and not using my phone more and calling more when I was just selfishly masking all of my pain. And that made me just forget to pick up my phone and use it. Noah, how important was your faith in helping you come to the realization that you needed help and that you wanted to change the course of your life? I think really important. And I think also, you know, I write about it in Loretta's song. Um, Faith, our faith as a family, really, I feel like was kept by my grandmother, that she kind of kept that peace and that faith and that hope in our family. Um, she was the closest person to an angel that I have ever, I've ever met. And I don't just say that lightly because she's my grandma. Like, I truly mean it. I truly mean that she would sleep in her makeup because in case she passed and met Jesus, she would want to look beautiful. Like do her hair, like powder her face. She was like, if I want, if I go tonight, I want to meet Jesus. <laughs> so like, you know, that, the, you know, I, I do have faith. And I also think the faith of, I pray to God that I do see my family again and my friends that I've lost. Cause it's not just my grandma that I've missed a phone call or two from. Yeah. And I would really, you know, I do have faith for that. But I think, you know, to answer your question, I'm not sure I had much faith. I didn't have any at all during that time. Um, and it wasn't till I started seeing faith till I was a few months into the process, actually. And how did that feel when it presented itself to you again? If you can find the words. Uh, strange. Like undeserving, uncomfortable almost. Um, I almost tried denying it a few times and I almost tried pushing it away. Um, but now it's a feeling that I feel like I haven't felt since childhood. Mm. Um, so it's really peaceful. This album is something I'm telling everybody. I, I, don't, I, I normally ask people to listen, you know. I'm telling you, <laughs> you have to listen to this record. Thank it's you. You, what you and your small team of collaborators have pulled together here is, you know, special and uh, doesn't come along very often. Um, 
What was it like writing and recording it? As, a, as an overarching experience, you talk, you mentioned this, this album in some really amazing context in terms of helping you to find forgiveness for yourself, helping you to bring your inner voice out so you weren't letting all those outside voices distract you and tell you to do shitty things. Self-distraction as self-destruction, right? And so recording these songs and being in this place of privacy that we've established, can you try and describe that? You know what? I wrote and recorded the songs at separate times um, because of COVID. You know, we weren't really... Well, PJ, who is kind of my main collaborator. I don't really, before that, I didn't really have main people that I worked with. And PJ and I found a really beautiful friendship and a really beautiful bond through our love to just make music. Um, and that's where we made our EP, our side project, and, you know, all of this music. Um, and I had written songs like Unfinished, like, God, back when I was 15 or 16. Yeah. Uh, with Dan Wilson and Ilse Juber. Um, but like... Sitting on them, waiting. Sitting, waiting, and waiting for the right moment because I knew that that song was special. I knew the the music was special. Um, some of the songs were there. Some of the songs had just been written. I Burned L.A. Down got written kind of in the process after I had met Mike, and that was just like, oh my God, this has to be on the record. Um, but getting in the room and actually recording them in the studio, I won't stop recording unless like Mike is like, no, I have to go take my kids, put them to bed, like get out. Like, or I will be like, okay, one more pass, one more pass, one more pass. A lot of the record is live. Um, just like full takes of each song. All those lead vocals, a lot of them are just live full takes. Um, so a lot of it just came so naturally. And again, back to that peaceful feeling. I feel like I was in this, my own serenity of music with Mike and it was just us and I and I really needed atten I needed to put my attention and focus towards something good <laughs> and and I got to do that and I got to just create and I got to just have fun and I got to work with incredible musicians like Chris Bond who's an incredible drummer who's worked on a lot of the Ben Howard records musicians do enough playing to know okay somebody is is has found uh, something to say here and our job is to surround that lovingly and give it space because there's space yeah i feel this. like musically too you're right there is space and when there is sound it's complementing lyrics to me that there's nothing that's not purposeful on this yeah. record yeah um and that's something Mike taught me. Cause if I was, if I was like in the chair, actually, like, cause I'll, I'm like, I'm like, I can produce, but not physically. Like, I need to learn how to do it on the production. Computer. Is just, is just, is just being able to, to, um, you know, like, uh, visualize, to have a vision and be able to execute. You can have people help you do that. That's well, what I want to learn how to like actually use the tools, the tools, mm -hmm. because. I am so specific yeah. and I am such, I can be such a micromanager right. whenever it comes to like glam or music or videos or editing or anything. I'm so like hyper-focused on everything mm. um, where if I love a guitar lick or a drum fill, I want to use every single one. And so the whole the whole song will just be like the hardest part. That's like yeah yeah yeah, 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 go time. Like the whole whole freaking song. Um, so yeah, I I kind of learned that like space and silence is actually so important, and letting letting the record just breathe is so important. Mike yeah. Mike Crossy is just so freaking talented. I'm so lucky to have been working with him. I'm I'm so blessed to now just have him in my corner and, and as a friend, as family to create. And, um, again, PJ is one of my favorite people in the world. I love writing songs found with your him. People. I did. And I, I love writing music. I love making music. And I feel like I found myself as well. By the way, did, did, did anybody else in the room just notice that we saw the two personalities of Noah Cyrus come out in about uh, 1.3 seconds there? <laughs> she said, he's so freaking talented. i can love that guy. Oh my god! So you self-edited and then just went for the straight hard f-bomb. No, never apologize. This is a 
fucking sweet place to say the word <laughs> it's not a problem but it just cracked me up that you was like self in it and find a way to just like be good and then equally at the same breath be bad <laughs> The, the use of the freaking is so my mom. My mom will always try to slip a freaking in there instead. Um, but yeah, it just slips out. You're it. right. That totally contradicted. That's the, the, bo- that's the both yeah, sides. Yeah. That's the both sides. It is. When you look back at the person that you were and you are no longer, um, and you're, you're the same person, but you've evolved and you now have space to feel new things and to try new things. What distractions do, and there's lots of them, they fill the space for you, right? They don't give you any space to acknowledge or face things down. They're just like, we got you. We'll do all that for you. You just keep on yeah. walking and let your heart beat and answer the questions in the best way you can and just get through it really is what it becomes at that point. What did, what did you start doing with that space apart from the music and whatever? Like, How did your mind change and what you began to focus on and what became important to you? My craft, for sure. Like I know you said other than the music, but that I, I wasn't focused. I was, but it wasn't my full attention. Um, my mental health, I really needed to take seriously, like doing therapy and physical health. And You have a process? I do. And what's in the process? Can I ask? Because I'm really fascinated because I've, I've developed my own one and I, I'm always looking for new inspiration. Like, do you, is it yoga for you? Is it, is it straight out exercise for you? How, how's your, you know, what's your nutrition situation? Yeah. For me, like getting, I love boxing. Me so, too. so boxing kind of got helped me a lot and saved me whenever I was doing, like even now. I yeah. mean, I love boxing. I love working out. So like. And gloves on or shadow? Gloves on. I'm shadow. See, I'm so sh- at shadow. I love shadow. Like I cannot shadow. I feel like a dork. When <laughs> yeah, I'm of course boxing. you do. That's the point. You I have feel to, like <laughs> such a dork. Well, you do. I, I mean, dork behavior. Stuff. I've got some like aggression in me. I got to get out, man. I mean, I do not look cool when I shadow box, to be absolutely clear. I here. look like such an idiot. So like, I know I, I try to not do shadow boxing, but my trainer is always like, come on, you got to do it to like learn. It's the most important part. It's like, good you- because what it does is it allows you to focus on technique rather than power. Yeah. So it allows you to actually like this. It, it's about speed and agility. Whereas yeah. hitting sh- is about hitting. Yeah, sh- just, ah! <laughs> it's just hitting. Sh- yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, physical and also like my dogs. <laughs> How many now? I have two. Okay, what kind are they? Um, I have a Bernese like mm-hmm. mountain dog poodle mix, so a mini wow. Bernadoodle. You have a mini Bernadoodle. Yeah. I met my first Bernadoodle just by chance. A guy sat next to me at a bar. I was on my own having a beer, which I really like to do. And this guy came in and he was on his own having a beer and he brought this Bernadoodle with him. And I was like, dude, you have the sickest looking dog ever. He's so great. And then Marshall, who I found off Craigslist, he, during the pandemic, he's a pandemic baby, (laughs) such a mama's boy. They save me. The process of waking up, feeding them, taking them out, going on walks, that actually kept me alive at one point in my life because I feel like I was, I knew that my dogs relied on me. I did when I felt like I had no purpose. The only purpose that I did have was those dogs. And so, you know, that's the great bond that you get out of animals. And, and so animals riding horses, um, focusing on me, and like doing what's good for me, that's, that's the difference. And, you know, when I thought you were going to ask me how I feel about who I was. I enjoy our conversations so much and I respect the way that you answer the questions and, the, and, and your honesty. I think you are inspiring in that regard. So I, I try to kind of get there rather than just like, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were two things I was going to ask off the back of it. That's one of them. Maybe that's the second one. The first one is, are you sort of any closer to understanding what drew you to that, to that environment in the first place? What you were ultimately trying to avoid or not wanting to acknowledge by allowing those drugs to do that work, to, 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 to distract you and just take you away? Definitely. There's a lot of personal things that it involve that, that I had to like come to terms with. Mm-hmm. I've acknowledged it and I'm definitely healing it. But I think also at the time, 
I did not want to be alive anymore. I, I didn't. And I was just waiting for one day that maybe just I maybe wouldn't wake up. I, I don't know where it was heading. Um, there were a lot of scary moments. I just know that I was I was trying to avoid being alive or maybe feeling the feeling of being alive because sometimes being alive is really painful. Oh, yeah. So. The work is hard. The work is really hard. It's really hard. And when you're faced with the option, got to ask yourself that tough question, you know, super hard. And um, it's hard too on the people that love you, eh? Because... There's only so much you can do, you know? And I'm sure you, you, looking back now, you realize, like, you could probably see with much greater perspective that those closest to you were freaking the out. Yeah. And when I go back and I look, I'm freaking the fuck out. Yeah, gosh. I see videos on my phone where, like, there's a specific interview of me online that my fans find quite funny. But actually, whenever I look at that video, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this is the worst that I ever got. It was seen in the public. That wasn't the worst it ever got. But that was so bad. And, like, I just wasn't there. Isn't it crazy how we immediately are drawn to the eyes as well? It's all in the eyes, right? Like, when you're gone, it's all there. Yeah. Yep. Looping back to where I'm at right this second is something that if I have experienced this feeling and this life before being not easy, not, life's not easy for anyone, you know, everybody's life is custom to them and their pain is custom and their heartache is custom. And, um, but either it's the first time or the first time in my, like a very freaking long time that I have felt this feeling in myself of mm. just peaceful happiness mm. um, and just living day by day and going to sleep, not hoping that I won't wake up. Just not even knowing is enough to really rock you. Like, whoa, how far off center am I? Where is my center? How do I even get back to that and what that actually means? I didn't even know who I was anymore or where or what I want or like what to go back to or what that was. I kind of like decided who I wanted to be going forward. Okay. Let's just be very specific if we can. That m turning point, that moment when you decided, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to make a change in my life mm -hmm. and I need help to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the most important questions of, in our conversation today because it's something it's that, that, that people, if they're feeling low, will realize is there. There is a dot on the horizon for everybody. You have to ask for help. You, that's, that is the conversation alone, life-saving, the conversation. I know... I know that some people aren't as lucky to get the resources that some of us may have yep. as in psychiatrists and yep. therapists. I, I understand. And like, it pains me that not every single person has that access because I think it's extremely important. But there are ways online, numbers you can call, hotlines, conversations, people in your life. If you're a younger child in school, an adult in school, a doctor, somebody that you actually trust. If you don't trust anyone in your family, find some, if you trust somebody else, talk to them. That's okay. You know, it's okay to not trust people close to you if that's just how you feel. How you feel is how you feel. Mm -hmm. But open up the conversation to anyone just to get those feelings moving and to get yeah. somewhere, just to start somewhere. That sums it up beautifully, just to get things moving in a different way. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be a deep one. I was so ready for this conversation because when I heard the music, I was like, 
I think Noah's going to share some real wisdom and, and there's going to be some real things to talk about here. Um, I'm so happy to be here. And oh, me too. To be able to have kind of, this is my first open conversation about wow. the album and the music <laughs> and um, really going, so to do it with you. And again, I just really appreciate everything you're telling me and that the album really made you feel because that was my goal is that I could touch any person that listened to it. And so I, I really, this album does really truly mean the world to me when I say that. I think the fact that you'd never made, thank you. I think the fact that you'd never made a debut album up until now is actually flawless. <laughs> I think it's like perfect because for you to make this your first real kind of body of work like this is who I am like wow all that work man and this is like a classic debut album thank you <laughs> imagine if you tried to do this five years ago it would have sounded totally different it all happened the right way yeah it definitely did um you know what my mom begged me to not do music when I wanted to do it she told me to wait till I was older and I really kind of, in a way, not I wish I would have listened to her. But you understand her, what she I was But I understand yeah, what yeah. she was meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, kind of, I could have maybe avoided a lot. Do you think that what was informing that decision was because she knew you had life to live and it was better to wait? Or had she seen what your siblings had gone through to some degree? Was it a combination of all of it? And your dad, you know? You know, I would love to ask her that. Actually, I would. Yeah. But I'm scared to say that it may have been that she knew what it was going to lead to and the road that you go down and you can go down and the things that are introduced to you. Because you know what? I was, I was not sheltered, but my mom, she had a pretty good grip on me. Parents did. Yeah, yeah. And I was the youngest of five. Um, I mean, Miley clearly was public and, and um, my mom had seen also the damaging sides of it that had been done to her or yeah. to my dad or to, you know, and she wanted me to pr be protected from that. God, man, um, powerful for her to let you go into it though. Yeah. Tough. I mean, they're, they're the type of parents that would never not let us do anything. Like if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I had a scar on my arm at 15 because I broke my clavicle riding horses. I'd have two surgeries literally wanted to like never show my shoulder again because it made me so I got a tattoo at 15 my mom right there letting me get my I think it was more like want your ears pierced okay want to dye your hair you kind of had the free will you know it was like core things that really mattered and who you are as a person and what you put in to this world and you know I don't, and, and what, I, I think it was, they focused on other things and yeah, yeah, controlling yeah. our bodies. Yeah, and, rather than how you're perceived by society. Yeah. What are you giving back to society? Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, one thing I was thinking about when we were talking here mm -hmm. is when I put lonely out in the world and I was also doing a lot of like mental health panels. The advice I gave there, like, still rings true. I would take my advice still. But? But I was not, I I was like, I don't know where people heard a song called Lonely that says, please someone help me. I, I'm slowly killing myself. How did someone not look, like, even, in, like, is she okay? Like, should she be at this panel speaking? Like, is she okay? Because I wasn't. I was taking Xanax to go to sleep. And that was at the time where yeah. I would usually only take it at nighttime. But as the addiction grew, it was daytime. It was midday. It was nighttime. It was in yeah. between then. That's the state of things at all times. So it just, when I look back now, and also we talk about mm. how I feel like I have someone now that cares for me and looks out for me, mm. I would hope that people on my inside would see things like this and, and changes in my behavior and think a little bit further into it. Well, because you're helping to make that change. And I'll tell you why, because I think time and time again, we've heard artists come out and cry for help through their art. <laughs> it's tough for us to know what to do as fans, right? Absolutely. And so what you do is you, you instantly, you just, you just keep it in the entertainment file. Yeah, it's absolutely. Entertainment. It's, it's powerful entertainment, but it's entertainment to me. And then 
you realize that like, of course the art has to come from somewhere truthful. Absolutely. And that's why I put the music out because it was 100% true. And I should have been putting that music out because that was my truth. There's just some of these songs are just like, it's like you found calm in acknowledging pain. Does that make sense? Yes. That's how, that's, if I could kind of describe my music, I would say that's what it is, right? (laughs) Kind of acknowledging your pain and making it beautiful and making it peaceful and calm. And um, Every Beginning Ends is such a powerful record lyrically, but also with just how conversational it is. Yeah, Um, for real. I heard you, I don't know if this was live in my room in there, an interview. I didn't know who was on the other side because it was just an infamous voice. And you guys were talking about uh, songwriting and and he was explaining, I'm not sure which artist you were talking about, about how his songwritings may be a little less poetic and a little more to the point. Talking to a, to a more mature Jamie T, who's a British singer-songwriter, and, and I met him, he was a young Jamie T. He was bouncing off the walls. And I asked him, I think I said to him, you know, like, what have you learned about yourself from the day that we first met to now? And he said, nothing. <laughs> and I love the answer because he was like, I, have to, I feel like I have to start again every time. And every answer is different, but I loved that. Yeah. Because it's like, maybe that is what it is. Yeah. Like, if you'd kept going, being informed by the last thing, we would not have this at all. Mm-mm. This album, to me, is, is like the sound of somebody who is acknowledging that it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to have been through pain and it, you don't have to run from it anymore. So I wonder what the road looks like now that some of that Ahead. stuff is, is behind you. And I know you said one day at a time, but I just sort of feel like it starts now. And I know it's not to be dismissive of the thing times we've talked before, but it does, man. I, I, I can't really remember what y- you were like before. <laughs> you know what? I think you met me right before I lost who I was. Mm. You know, like when I was with Labyrinth, I was still a kid. Mm. But um, I forgot who I was for like a really long time. And um, I think moving forward is also for me personally, which I think you were asking that also musically, but for me personally, now I'm making peace with that person that went through everything in the past three, four years. Um, I had to make peace with other things to get to where I am now. And now I have to make peace with who I was back then. That's an important part of the process too. Yeah. Otherwise um, that person's always on your shoulder, right? But you know what? I just, for me, I want to create music that's on my own terms and, and art, art, art that's on my own terms and whoever's on board with it. I'm, I love it and I love that they love my music and I love that they love to sing, but I, I'm not trying to, I'm not going to conform to anything ever again. I just want to be myself. I just want to write music. I love music. I love writing songs. There's really nothing more to it. I'll never try too hard to create something or do something again. If I just let it be, it'll be, and it'll happen. Um, and that's what I did with this album. And you're right. It happened at the perfect time. I'm so happy this is my first album because it's everything I would have wanted it to be. If you come out of nowhere with this and we didn't know who you were, I think people would just be freaking the fuck out. I think <laughs> I think people were going to freak out when they when they listen. That's what I'm saying. Like, you really got to listen to this. You really got to draw yourself into it and listen to it. And people will. What an amazing realization. How old are you now, can I ask? I'm 22. You are 22 years old and you've realized now that the road ahead is yours to charter. And that... You've found your sound and it will grow and evolve and change and there'll be some f- harder stuff, and some softer stuff and you'll break, you'll get even more heartbreaking and you'll get even more uplifting. But man, to know that that is your map. Wow. I don't think Thanks. it gets better than that as a, as a creative person. Thanks, man. Right? It doesn't. Yeah. It, it's what a magic realization. Oh, man, your family must have been so proud. Did, did you <laughs> oh, my God, thanks. Did, did you even play them things in process, or did you have a moment where you just sat down and said, I need to play this music? Yeah, I would send. You know what's funny? I I just, I show my parents my music. 
I guess I don't go out of my way to not send it to my siblings, but I just find myself sending my mom and dad my music the most. So what happens when you play this in a more complete form to your siblings who are all, you know, pretty much all creative? I mean, they know this is in you, but it must have just been so rewarding. You know, my siblings haven't heard the full album. You are kidding. <laughs> We're all kind of split up. So I have two brothers and a sister in Nashville. Um, and I, Miley and I, I mean, we see each other when we can, but we've kind of been in and out of the like same places at different times kind yeah. of recently. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's heard some of the music, but like, um, I don't know if I've really had them. And my, my like everybody's heard Has she heard, heard Noah? Like, Has she heard Noah? It's so funny that you call it Noah because it is called Noah, but I always call it Stand Still. Well, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, but it's, yeah. No, she hasn't heard Noah. Um, oh God. And I, I actually want to start calling the song Noah, by the way, because like I should. And I, but like, yeah, I've, I've, I got to get on that because it is called that. But yes, I, I haven't played it for her. I've played my brother, my side of the bed. Um, and he was like, whoa when that synth bass came in and that song took forever for me to be completely happy with. The whole album is brilliant, but that opening song, like I said to you, it's like your eye, when you listen to it, your eyes widen and you're like, this is why art exists and so powerful moments like this. I'm fascinated that you haven't, and I understand sending an MP3 on text to your sister with that is like, it's almost too much to ask. It's almost like I want to play it for them. I don't know. Something about me, like, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed sometimes with my work, like, and, and like, shameful wow. that I almost feel like, I don't know. I, I, You're I don't know what you. it you is. You don't have an answer for this. I don't have an answer for it. I really haven't even thought about it. I just, I don't even think I've even really thought about it ever. Is it is it bizarre that it's, I haven't sent the album? No, that's not the word. It's <laughs> it's it's curious because okay. because um it's not even about like hey I made this doesn't it sound good? Do we think I'm being secretly secretive? No, I think <laughs> you're going to ask me what I really think. I don't know. We need to crack the code. Yeah, well, I like I said to from my perspective, it's not like hey I made this. It sounds great. What do you think? It's more like hey this is kind of who I was and who I've become. And it says a lot of things I haven't been able to say to you. It's all wrapped up in here. And I wanted to say it. And I want you to hear it. Maybe there's some fear in that. Maybe there definitely is. Um, there definitely could be. I feel like the fact that I really can't even find an answer is kind of strange, right? I just haven't even really thought about it. I I played them music, I played them certain songs, but I don't know. When my dad heard "Stand Still," yeah, um, or Noah, um, when my dad heard it, he was pretty floored, and he did exactly what you did, and he picked up a guitar and he learned it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, there is something really special about the like twiddle in the guitar chords and and that whole lower register verse is just so deep and powerful and coming from my actual soul. I, know, I didn't know I could sing that deep. Well, like I did. I knew I did harmonies and stuff that deep, but I didn't know that I would like it enough as like a lead vocal. Well, it's not expected of a young kid who's finding their feet in the music business. No one's going to expect like, hey, have you heard Noah Cyrus's first single? And you come out and you're like, hey. yeah. you know, they want <laughs> you to kind of like, you know. Yeah, Mike and I just kept lowering it and lowering it and lowering it after I wrote it. And I was just like, I found my mic that I love. I love U67s. Like, that's my mic. Take note. Uh, yeah, like I have I've I love using that mic. It records beautifully. It catches like the really deep parts of my voice. Mm. Um, and so... Yeah, whenever I started singing Stand Still, it was just like, this is so powerful. Even whenever, you know, for me, it's like, I don't really feel like I have to show off. Not anymore. Any, I don't feel like I have to belt or do anything extra or add any bells or whistles to my, I, it just is what it is. But it, now you must just reach for this 
or reach into a place and pick it up and just be able to go, my dogs are chill. This is what I do. Everyone's given me the space to do it and I can just, I can just find what I need to say and it's going to be okay. And when I say it, it's going to be okay. And, and the music's going to come out. People are going to love it. And those are, aren't, I, I'm okay if they don't. And that's your life now. Man, what a joy. It's unreal. You don't have to, re- you don't have to show up because someone said 10 a.m. in the studio for a session. I just said I don't think I'm ever, ever going to do that you again. You never have to do that again. I don't think I'll ever do that again. It's like you are now Noah Cyrus. <laughs> this is what you do. <laughs> Awesome. Can you imagine the albums we're going to get? The songs we're going to get? I'm, I, I s- ended the first album and I was already like, okay, Mike, next week, let's get in for Don't the second album. Don't stop, Noah. I, I'm Don't not. Don't stop. I'm not. I'm, I'm really in such a creative space and I'm making some amazing music and, um, and, I, and I feel that for the first time. It's, it's very rewarding to feel that.